I had the best time doing that uh, Cal Dunnigan thing yesterday. You know, Craig's News? Yeah. Yeah. Episode 26. Yeah, I watched it. It was good. You did a good job mm. keeping a straight face. Yeah. Oh, man, that was tough. He's so funny. Man, they, they're tight. They're a tight little ship over there. Really? So they, it's not just yeah. around. They're running a business. Oh, yeah. He's talking normal. Then he changes his face. And it's he disappears, man. It's the weirdest you've ever seen in your life. Because you're you're talking to him, it's like, hey, what's going on, Scott? And talking, and then he just turns that on. It's like, oh my god, and it's live. That's the thing. It's it all goes down live. That's the hardest I've ever had. To try not to laugh. And I've, I was seeing you were trying. Man, <laughs> is he uh, is he pretty cool, dude? Like when he's oh real? yeah, that's good. Yeah, to know. great guy. You know. I'm gonna mute but this. Funny is, she's he would just do and then and dismiss it like it's nothing. But God, Amadi was funny, really funny, dude. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yep, yeah, ready to go. Yep, here we go. I'm Scott Rouse. I'm a body language expert and analyst, and I train law enforcement in the military in interrogation and body language. And I created body language tactics with Greg Hartley, Mark. I'm Mark Bowden. I'm an expert in human behavior and body language. I help people all over the world to stand out, win trust, and gain credibility every time they communicate, including some of the leaders of the G7. Chase. I'm Chase Hughes. I'm a best-selling author of a book on behavioral profiling, body language, persuasion, and influence. I train those things to government agencies and the general public. I'm also in Florida. I apologize. My background is different. Greg. I'm Greg Hartley. I'm a former Army interrogator, interrogation instructor, resistance to interrogation instructor. I've written 10 books on body language and behavior and put this course, Body Language Tactics, at bodylanguagetactics.com together with Scott. And I spend most of my time on Wall Street and in corporate America. Excellent. All right. Well, today we're going to go over a couple, or a few apology videos. And those are the videos that someone does when they, they're an internet star and they've made a mistake by saying something they shouldn't have or doing something they shouldn't have. And they come on and apologize for it. So Greg's collected a bunch of those, and we're going to take a look at a few of them. Uh, I think our first one's going to be Logan Paul. We good? Yeah. Let's, play. Let's go. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment, and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. So what we came across that day in the woods was obviously unplanned. And the reactions you saw on tape were raw, they were unfiltered. Uh, none of us knew how to react or how to feel. I should have never posted the video. I should have put the cameras down and stopped recording what we were going through. There's a lot of things I should have done differently, but I didn't. And for that, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. I want to apologize to the internet. I want to apologize to anyone who's seen the video. I want to apologize to anyone who has been affected or touched by mental illness or depression or suicide. But most importantly, I want to apologize to the victim and his family. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. Um, the goal with my content is always to entertain to push the boundaries, to be all inclusive. In the world I live in, I share almost everything I do. The intent is never to be heartless, cruel, or malicious. Uh, like I said, I've made a huge mistake. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm disappointed in myself. And I promise to be better. I will be better. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Greg, you want to go first? Sure. I'm going to take it down a little different path than you might think, not just body language, because you only apologize when a handful of things occur. And there's some social emotions that we're tied up in. Those primarily around guilt or shame are the reasons you need to apologize. People will say embarrassment, but embarrassment is the moment you realize that you've done something to cause guilt or shame. And those two things have very different very different causes. One, guilt is an internal thing. I've violated something in myself. And shame is you've broken the contract with society. Those are two very different reasons. How you deal with that, whether you internalize or externalize it, is based on how your brain is wired. 
some people immediately go and lunge back at the person and that's their way of externalizing the problem. Others internalize it and it turns into a way they have to rationalize and come up with an, a reason or an excuse. And there's a lot of opportunity in either case to deny and to lash out. So we're going to see very different approaches in each of these people. And in this guy, I'm going to hit just a few things. I'm going to say, I can see that he is, whether he had a coach or he rehearsed and practiced what he needed to say, he clearly is accessing that auditory memory. You can see it when he hits things like, um, I am always intend to entertain, I'm not worthy. And the interesting one for me is when he says something about not being worthy of whatever, you see that mouth grooming and that, lick, that him licking his lips. He also purses his lips at talking about the victim and does that tongue jut. This is a very uncomfortable thing for him. And I'm going to stop right there and say, if I were looking for a genuine apology, if he's, if his apology is genuine and I believe it's based on his feelings of guilt and remorse for whether he believes that he did something wrong or he just jacked up his career is a different story. But I see a genuine feeling of guilt here from my angle. And you guys may disagree. Chase, what do you got? I see an absence oh, of emotion. There's, there's not much emotion here at all. And I think there's some regret and there's some regret that, that damaged his, his career as a YouTuber. Uh, he says the words, the victim to describe the, the person that they had found. And we see immediate lip compression after that. I thought that was, Interesting. It was a good data point. I don't think it's going to give us a whole bunch of data to something to look for, but it's interesting that that, that was there. It shouldn't be there with, for someone who feels genuine remorse. The genuine remorse, when they said the victim, you see movement here or downward eye movement towards the emotional part of the eye sphere. I'll just made that up. Uh, when he says, please don't defend my actions, there's a quick eyebrow flash right there, which is saying, I think that he's showing innocence there towards his, his followers who are defending his actions and asking them to keep defending his actions. So that's that little display of innocence there. I'll, I'll skip a few of these. I'm disappointed. I'm ashamed of myself, both followed by lip puckering, sour taste. I think this is in, this is a disagreement with this statement. This is the sour taste. He feels like he has to say these things in order to regain some of his followership. And the best one there, the clearest one there is I promise to be better. And this is followed by a very strong jaw clenching behavior. And you guys can talk about the meaning of that uh, if, if you want to expound on it. But I would say this is indicative of restraint and anger. Scott, what do you got? All right. I'm going to talk, let me talk a little bit about that uh, lip pursing for a second. Cause I think what's happening there, it's stress, but what he's getting ready to do, he's doing that because he's, he's like, okay, I got this other stuff out of the way. Here we go. That's when he starts unloading the part about the victim and the part about, uh, you, don't, you know, they don't feel sorry. We're right in the middle when all that really starts. So another thing, and I agree with you on this. We see no expression whatsoever, no expression change. We see a little bit of, of movement in the eyebrows, but not, not much at all. His voice in his bass line is, is usually his voice volume is much higher than that. It's much more lively and it's, it, you know, because he's an entertainer and he's trying to be exciting. It's low, almost creepily low in this case. And he uses different words. He, his, his vernacular is completely different than what he usually uh, uses when he's out talking about anything else because he's goofing off and doing that. But this is completely uncharacteristic of his uh, the behavior we've seen so far with him. And I think what we're seeing, and this indicates to me, is narcissistic behavior because what he's doing is he's putting himself, he's, when he talks about in my world, it's like, there's your world, but in my world, I share everything. So that's what we're seeing in, in this point. He's separating himself from everyone as he goes, as he goes through that. And then we see his, uh, when it comes to his eyes, there, his blink rate is not really very fast. It's fairly slow. And going back to what Chase always goes to is the shutter speed. His eyes close and, they, and they're, they're not quick to open up really, really fast. They, they open and close really quickly. I'm going to put that in the eye blocking category because he, I don't believe he wants to do this or he doesn't like doing this as he's going along. Um, and then when he presses his lips together, again, that's, that's his, 
that's him getting ready to deliver his, the message, the reason he's here. Because all this is up is a build up to that. Everything else is a build up to that. And as far as loping goes, it's not it's not very smooth. I got 500 bucks that says this is like his fifth or sixth time of giving this a shot because he's trying to do it all in one shot. He looks ready to do it. He looks like he's rehearsed this and he's remembering things he said before and how it went. That's the way it looks to me. Then when it comes to his eyes, to the eye blinking, once he starts into that, into the part about the victim and who he actually feels sorry for and, and all that, there's a 14 second gap between blinks there. He doesn't blink for 14 seconds. He's looking right down the barrel. We don't see any illustrators. He's not, he's not moving his hands, not even moving his head very much. That to me is what in, indicates that, that it's not, it's not a sincere. He really does feel bad about doing that, but it's nothing. He's, he's not going, look, I'm sorry. Your hands open up. They come, they, they open, they'll move around as you're trying to communicate as much as you possibly can your point to a person or, or to, to the internet, as he says, because he's apologizing to the internet. Uh, then, um, yeah, I'm just going to stop there. There's so much to do, but I think this is rehearsed. And I'm going to, I would bet that this is five or six shots into it before you get started. Mark, what do you got? Yeah. So to pick up on Greg's point here, if the society around you has been disdainful of you, contemptful of you, they've basically said, you've done something socially wrong. You're out. Uh, as we say in England, you're, you're uh, being sent to Coventry. I don't know why. Coventry is not that bad. But anyway, that's what we say. You're being sent to Coventry. Hello to everybody from Coventry. Uh, so what you have to show, and it's the same across the planet, it doesn't matter what social group, society, country you belong to, when you are shown disdain, you must show shame and remorse. And it's a, it's a big signal. What you do is you show sorrow and you do eye blocking. You look down. Okay, and you dare not look anybody else in the eye because you don't deserve their status. And that if you show enough shame, they let you back in because everybody needs each other. Okay, so I, I don't see that prolonged shame. I don't even see any indicators of shame in this. Here's what I do see. I see a lot of lip grooming throughout, which is that lick lipping stuff. I think it's not so much pushing out the bad things. I think it's trying to say, hey, I, I still look good. Okay. And that's especially around the idea of heartless, cruel, um, heartless and cruel. He doesn't want to be seen as heartless and cruel. It's important that his, his fans, his society see him as not heartless, cruel and malicious was another word that he's that he does around that biggest piece of lip grooming. He says, I'm simply here to apologize. And there, as, 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 as Chase pointed out, there is this sour, bitter taste that you see there. I, I concur with Chase. I don't think he likes this idea of having to apologize. I don't think the bitterness is around what got him there. I think the bitterness is around that he's there and having to do this right now. I'm sorry. He says, I think at that point, we see him going to freeze, the freeze part of fear. Now, we might go, well, is he accessing, because he's just talked about the images that he saw and recorded, which were some pretty awful images that he, uh, he recorded and, and broadcast and kind of made fun of. Um, we, we, we might go, well, is he accessing those images, which would be pretty fearful images to most people, a, a pretty strong image of death. I, I think probably not. Um, I think probably the fear is around him losing his status and his audience right now. Uh, disappointed in myself. And again, sour, bitter taste. But again, we see no shame around this. So on a, on a, on a scale of great, sincere apologies that show shame... I don't think we're seeing one here. I think we see other things that all of us have described. Greg? The, the one thing I think we have to remember, and I tried to look for eye-breaking because shame and guilt should both have those. Mm -hmm. These guys do this all the time. Every one of these guys you're going to look at are camera focused. So it's it does make it a little awkward, but I agree with you. I don't see the normal try to break eye contact and do that. I actually looked at Ekman and Ekman says the one thing that indicates shame 
is lack of facial expression and breaking eye contact. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, yeah. I, I agree, Greg. And I, I, I'm going to push on that, which is, I would say shame and grief is, 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 is uh, and guilt is not something we experience every day, especially shame at a high level, I, I, I would say. And therefore, most likely, you're not ready for it. When it comes, you're not prepared for it. And even though you might be an entertainer that, that deals with this every day, you know, and is on camera every day and is, is managing their emotions every day, shame is not one that you'll have managed on a daily basis. So I would say if shame is really there, you're not going to be able to countermeasure it. It'll, it'll, it'll come yeah. out. I, and, and that's looking at other uh, apologies that I've seen where people have shown shame and they are entertainers and it's super clear. They can't countermeasure it. They can't control it. So let's throw it around and see see what our percentage of uh, sincerity is on on this, right? Because I gave I gave him a, a four on being sincere. Greg, what do you give him? Four percent. Four out of ten. A four out of ten. I one to ten. I give okay. him four out of ten. Yeah. So I think he's showing guilt, but guilt about himself. I don't think he's showing a sincere apology. I think he's apologizing because he has to, and the guilt is showing. So I'll give him a three or four. Let's make it four. I'll agree with you. Okay, Chase. What do you got? I think it's more regret than anything else, but I'd give him a 3.764 out of 10 for honesty of the apology. Excellent. Mark? Yeah, if it's shame that we're looking for, and from my point of view, I'd say it is, I'm giving him like a two or a three on that. I'm not seeing enough shame to, uh, if any, really, okay. to, to make cool. it a sincere social apology. Cool. Okay. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment and I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm simply here to apologize. So what we came across that day in the woods was obviously unplanned and the reactions you saw on tape were raw, they were unfiltered. Uh, none of us knew how to react or how to feel. I should have never posted the video. I should have put the cameras down and stopped recording what we were going through. There's a lot of things I should have done differently, but I didn't. And for that, from the bottom of my heart, I am sorry. I want to apologize to the internet. I want to apologize to anyone who's seen the video. I want to apologize to anyone who has been affected or touched by mental illness or depression or suicide. But most importantly, I want to apologize to the victim and his family. For my fans who are defending my actions, please don't. They do not deserve to be defended. Um, the goal with my content is always to entertain, to push the boundaries, to be all inclusive. In the world I live in, I share almost everything I do. The intent is never to be heartless, cruel, or malicious. Uh, like I said, I've made a huge mistake. I don't expect to be forgiven. I'm just here to apologize. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm disappointed in myself. And I promise to be better. I will be better. Thank you. Are you ready to roll? Mm-hmm. Let's move on. I want to talk to you guys in this video. It's been so hard. It's almost impossible. It's probably the hardest things I've ever done. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to you guys. I'm so sorry for disappointing you. All right, Chase, what do you got? A couple little things here and one big one. So she's prostrating herself on the floor for the video. I think that's relevant. I think she filmed herself on the floor of the room 
for a reason. Be it conscious or unconscious, I don't know. I think the emotion is genuine and heartfelt. She looks at herself on camera pretty often. I don't think that's indicative of any deception or anything withholding. I think that's just indicative of someone who's a YouTuber who is inherently self-obsessed like we are, like we all are. We stare at ourselves the whole show. I saw you I'm looking at you, Chase. I'm, I'm always yeah, I'm looking, totally looking, totally looking, looking at you, Chase, don't you know? <laughs> so the big thing here is she says, I'm better than that person. This is called dissociative language. And this is her saying that the person who did that is different than me. And I did not have time to go research her baseline. I only got one of these people's baseline. But I think that people who use dissociative language regularly or dissociative language when it comes around doing bad things, that they potentially uh, suffered some abuse. And I'm not making the statement that she did. But people who are more prone to dissociation and dissociative language have had a, had some rough times growing up. And I'll pass that on to you. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, uh, so totally concur with the disassociation and, and, and the distancing that comes uh, with that. I um, you know, have it in my notes here. So uh, ab absolutely. Um, you know, it, and she says, it hurts me so bad that I disappointed you. So, you know, I would suggest to Scott's earlier point about our last character, there's some narcissism in there. This is more about me than it is about you. Having said that, she does pretty well up until that, that narcissistic and disassociative point. And, and here's how I think she does well. Well, there is the setup, as you say, there's the being on the floor and, and the white interior and the white clothing. So there's a, a clear desire around displaying the idea of, of purity. And, and wearing white and being around white is a, is a classic uh, across uh, many cultures around that. So there's a good setup there to go, you know, I, I'm doing this for very, very pure reasons. I'm a pure person. We have got the red in the eyes. We have got the tears. We even get the nose going red and the cheeks uh, going red. Now that's, that's, um, that's pretty hard to do. Uh, there are some things you can use, just get some tiger balm or something like that. And you can make your eyes do, do that and, and everything will follow and you rub it around your nose and it'll do that. And it will actually produce enough tears. So your tears drain actually, uh, not only down here, but they drain into your nasal cavity here. And, and if you cry enough, um, enough will come actually down your nose that lots of snot starts to starts to come out of there, and she's managed to get it to that to that level. Um, so I got to say, you know, she she's really um, ramped it up here in terms of a lot of the outward expressions that we'd want that we want to see around sorrow and and crying. Though I will say there are some other ways that you can uh, do this. Now she does look to the camera and go. I'm so I'm uh, I'm so sorry, and then she does look down in shame. So I think there's a moment of of shame there. Here's my problem: is I'm not seeing the uncontrollable breathing that should be going along with that emotion. Uh, she should the breathing should be a different pattern with that level of crying, and I'm not seeing that. So maybe there's some devices being used to produce those amounts of tears. Maybe this is her third, fourth, fifth go at this, and she's she's ramped it up emotionally, uh, but it but she hasn't managed to get the breathing pattern that goes uh, goes with it. Um, so again, I'm, and then the disassociation at the end really jars for me. I'll leave I'll leave it there. Uh, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so I'm going to go in a different direction from you guys. I work in corporate America and have for a long time, and I can't tell you how many women have told me that they cry for one reason in business. Guess what reason? Frustration. Let somebody down. Number one, the fr it's frustration almost always. If you get a woman in a point where you see her crying in a, in a boardroom meeting, or you get in, usually it's frustration. Almost every time I've talked to them, it's 
maybe it's because they let somebody down, Chase. I think it, that could be it. But frustration is almost always there. And I heard something very specific in her breathing. I heard exasperation. I didn't hear crying breathing. I heard <sighs> that hard exhale, those kinds of things. So I hear frustration in her. And that frustration with being forced into a position where she's doing this, I'm better than this, I, I don't see her as genuinely feeling emotion about what she's done wrong. I see her as frustrated and in a, in a position. Her eye contact is interesting because she's looking at, she's, there's an old thing we would call pulling taffy. You look at somebody and pull your eyes as you're requesting approval. That's what I see in the eye movement. And I could be way off here, but I don't see any of that, that guilt or shame. Because when people feel sorrow and guilt and shame, their, their brows come together in the middle, that grief muscle, or their brows rise. Hers is down when you're looking at her. That to me is telling and her tone of voice is telling, not as much as somebody will see later, but her tone of voice with all that crying mixed in and that brow make me think she's she's frustrated. There's exasperation in her. So I don't see a genuine feel of remorse. I see a frustration and uh, I have to do this, but, and maybe I'm way off base. Scott, what do you got? All right. I agree with all that. I'm, I'm with you. <clears throat> when she opens up, she says, I want to talk to you guys in this video. It's been so hard. If you can make out what she's saying. And that is the, it's just, it's, it's just so bad. She, and she's constantly eye blocking. She's constantly, and sometimes she's blocking her whole face. She has her, if the camera's over here. She's doing this thing with her hands and it's blocking her face. I think she's uh, maybe ashamed of what happened, but I think she's maybe ashamed of what she's doing because she knows it's going to be tough to get, to make that thing believable. Going back to the grief muscle, there's no grief muscle there. There's nothing there. I mean, her, her, your, her eyebrows go down like that. Another thing, when people first start crying, what they'll do is this part of your mouth goes up and these start coming down. So it's not duper's delight. That's not what we're seeing. But she doesn't know how to cry, how to fake cry, or she's done it so long. It's always worked that way. That That's what she's going with. But we're not seeing those that turn down sides of the mouth. We're seeing no grief muscle whatsoever. A little bit there and... Oh, uh, Chase is always referring to the chin boss. We see a little bit there, but that's because she's pulling that up herself. It's not the true um, sadness we're seeing there. That's not, that's not real. Um, <laughs> then let's stay. And then, and then she starts to wipe her eye. She starts to wipe, to, to, to wipe her right eye, which is, I can't, it's her right eye. But as she, before there's even a tear there, she's already wiping her eye. And then when the tear does show up, she leaves it alone. In our, in our course, we talk about how when, when you're looking for someone who's fake crying, one of the things you look for is they'll, they'll be talking like in Scott Peterson when he's crying and he just lets it roll down. He can feel it. He knows he's crying. He knows there's tears there, but they'll just let it roll down so you can see it because it's a show for you or for the person they're talking to, especially the camera. You see people with their, their you know, famous people who are crying about something that's supposed to be heartwarming or heart lifting or, or, you know, supposed to affect you emotionally. And you'll see that tear come down. They'll just be talking and looking and just looking so sincere. And it's all just because it's they're just letting the, the, the tear ride down there. So overall, on a sincerity level between one and ten, I'm gonna give her a two. So I think it's all just it's just all there's a little very little sincerity there. It's all insincere, I think. Mark, what'd you get for your sincerity level on that on one to ten? I am gonna give it a two point five of uh, a three, because I think I do see a little look down of of shame. But really, you know, when I've seen people cry in shame and the head just hangs and tears drip off the end of the nose. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's just a waterfall of tears down down the end of the of the nose as they hang their heads and their hair comes down. And it's, you know, it's not good. You know, it's not good entertainment. <laughs> so okay. uh, anyway, there's mine. Chase, right, what's your number five. on this one? I'm going to go with a five and a half. Only because of the potential, the potential that this is at the end of her having cried for a very long time, which could possibly explain the changes in breathing and the lacrimal ducts being empty, the tear ducts being empty. Greg? Greg, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to go about three and a half. I, the thing for me is anybody who is crying tries not to. You watch them, and I, I'm not talking about touching, but you'll see them. We did it on the Dr. Phil show to stop somebody from crying. Instinctively, people move their eyes around in their head when they're crying because they're trying to stop it. They're trying to figure and they do the <laughs> the inhale, not the <sighs> exhale. So I'm I'm gonna say three and a half, maybe a four, but I don't think she feels genuinely sorry for anything except for getting in this situation. That's what I I see. I agree. I think there's more guilt 
than regret or shame. Well, now, a lot of these guys, I, I, you know, if you get in trouble, you feel guilty for that because you're ruining your reputation. All of us feel guilty. Right. Guilt yeah. is an internal contract, not an external contract, right? I want to talk to you guys in this video. It's been so long. It's almost impossible. It's hard. It's probably the hardest things I've ever done. Ready? Yep. Let's do yeah. it. All right, let's yeah. move. I uh, wanted to make a statement on what I said in my previous live stream. You probably won't believe me when I say this, but whenever I go online and I hear other players use the same kind of language that I did, I always find it extremely immature and stupid. And I hate how I now personally fed into that part of gaming as well it was something that i said in the heat of the moment i said the worst word i could possibly think of and it just sort of slipped out and i'm not gonna make any excuses to why it did because there are no excuses for it i'm disappointed in myself because it seems like i've learned nothing from all these past controversies and it's not that i think i can say or do whatever i want and get away with it that's not it at all I'm just an idiot, but that doesn't make what I said or how I said it okay. It was not okay. I'm really sorry if I offended, hurt, or disappointed anyone with all of this. Being in the position I am, I should know better. I know I can't keep messing up like this. And I owe it to my audience and to myself to do better than this because I know I'm better than this. I really want to improve myself and better myself, not just for me, but for anyone that looks up to me or anyone that's influenced by me. And that's how I want to move forward away from this. That's all I had to say. Thank you for watching. Bye. All right. Well, I'll go first on this one. Um, in this one, we see lots of illustrators. We see lots of, uh, lots of loping. He's just talking. He's just talking. I don't think this is rehearsed. I think he thought about what he was going to say. I think he turned his camera on and went with it. He may have added a couple of things because there are edits in there or something he didn't like, or he may have coughed or something. But I think that I, I, I think at that point we're seeing uh, honesty up, up to that point. Then we see that, that head tilt down a little bit as he's talking. Sometimes the head will go down to the right a little bit. That denotes emotion, <clears throat> excuse me, as he's talking through that. And, and I think it's true emotion we're seeing in that his voice tone and, 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 vernacular all that stuff is the same as it is and his baseline i watched some other things where he's talking it's the same thing i think he's being himself in this um and the camera he looks right down the barrel his illustrators are big he's he's you, you see a lot of his hands moving and we see him these illustrators hit right on the money every time he talks the words that his brain is supposed to be emphasizing he's emphasizing right where he should be so that tells me that that that's sincere as well i i think this mine's short because I believe this guy. I believe every word he says. I know people like that. And when they're being honest and when they're talking about something they've done or messed up, as, as we do, it looks real. And this, to me, looks and feels real. Because, and I think he'd be a good hang. I mean, just by looking at that, by the way he's, he's handling that, I think he'd be a good hang. It's somebody you could trust and want to hang around with, as corny as that sounds. And on a one to 10, I give him a 10 in sincerity and being honest. All right, Greg, what do you got? Yeah, so a, a few things. Yeah, the illustrators are on message. He's delivering his message. He actually does what I re refer to as a request for approval, where he has a confirming glance where he looks to say, hey, I, I screwed up. And you see his brow rise and drop. When he talks about people doing this all the time, you see some contempt as his lip rises and exposes his left canine. And then you, as you look through the rest of this thing, he actually uses social contract language. Look, this is bad and there's shame. There's shame associated with this. And as much as you'll see, I think, anybody doing these videos, he breaks eye contact. 
as often as he can. It, he knows he still has to look, but there's that. His blink rate increases as he talks about shame and about breaking the social contract. I, I'll just go ahead and give him mine too. I'm going to give him eight. I rarely give anybody 10 because, you know, who knows how much it took. But it does look natural. It doesn't look rehearsed. I don't see him eye accessing for recall words. So I'll give him an, an eight out of 10. And I think it's actually there. Yeah. Uh, Mark. Yeah, so uh, I haven't had a chance to baseline him. So I don't know whether he consistently has the, the kind of lip curl, slight lip curl that I see he does it. throughout this. He doesn't? No, no. Okay. Okay, so that's that's important. Um, I wanted to make a statement. He snarls on that. There's dislike around making this statement. He doesn't want to be doing this, okay? Okay. Um, so, so you know, what can we construe from from that? Well, either he's he's he dislikes what he's done, or uh, he dislikes having to talk about what he's done, or or he dislikes this 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 moment. Essentially, it's something he'd rather not be doing. Um, he controls the the objections right from moment one. Um, he says it was because of the heat of the moment. And then later on, he says, well, I'm not going to make excuses. Well, heat of the mo moment is an excuse. And so he's kind of countermeasured uh, already the idea of putting an excuse up front and then saying, I won't be excusing myself. It's already been, been done. Um, you probably won't believe me when I say this. Again, this is taking control of the objections right up front. So I think we've got to understand there's some really good crisis management 101 messaging going on during this. At the same time as, as we've got Scott and Greg here saying, I think this is, this is honest and, and, and felt, it's, it's worth thinking about. This isn't, uh, it's well thought out, I would suggest. Um, move uh, I uh, hope I haven't disappointed anyone with all of this. I don't see shame at that point. I see disgust, uh, again, around this idea of disappointment. So, yeah, he's probably disgusted with himself that he's got himself into this situation and he's disappointed people, but I'm not seeing strong shame around that. Uh, he wants to move forward away from this. I mean, that's a that's a beautiful classic of crisis management is let's just move forward away from all of this and I think that there, there is some um there's some some severity softening there I mean what are we talking about where, where are we where are we moving from where are we moving where's the better place what, what was the problem here it's not being stated at this point and he on that he does show disgust and the bitter taste as well so let me give you my mark. Yeah, I think there's a lot of um, uh, good feeling in in this, and and it seems to be well um, and and kind of authentically put across. At the same time, I think he's really thought about how he's going to control the message in this and move people forward. So there's some good crisis management 101 happening in the background here. Chase, what have you got? Yeah, so we do see this uh, sneer that he does with his lip exposing his canine. Charles Darwin wrote about this in the 1800s. He noticed it in animals and then started talking about how it's a similar thing in humans, except in response to social threat instead of physical threat. Same thing we see a dog do. Uh, there's more cuts in the video, but I, th I think that's just indicative of a YouTuber because there's a report published in 2007 that says the more cuts you have between language, the more someone's willing to spend more time on the video. So they'll, they'll stick around longer. I hate how I fell into this. We see genuine emotional recall there. His ears get redder throughout the video. And this is an indicator called ear blushing. Most people refer to it as ear blushing. It's not very reliable. It's stress, excitement, anger. There's so there's a long list of stuff that it could be. So I would not say that that's a reliable indicator very much. Uh, but there are some very specific Swedish behaviors that we're seeing in here that are more prevalent in Sweden. He makes more eye contact uh, with the camera. That eye contact is very common in Sweden. 
and he's very to the point without humor and it's business purposes only. And when the video is over, he says, okay, that's it. And I'm, I'm finished with the video, whatever he says, very, very Swedish. And the eyebrow flash is extremely common in Sweden. And you see, he's a, he's a multimillionaire and he's in this room that looks like a college kid's apartment. I don't think that was deliberate to show some kind of poverty in Sweden. If you say I'm a number one bestseller or I have the number one body language course, people will look down on you, everybody. So they are very muted with a lot of their things. So I think that's just his natural uh, way of being and his lifestyle. Overall, I give him a, probably a nine. Uh, cool. I uh, wanted to make a statement on what I said in my previous live stream. You probably won't believe me when I say this, but whenever I go online and I hear other players use the same kind of language that I did, I always find it extremely immature and stupid. And I hate how I now personally fed into that part of gaming as well. It was something that I said in the heat of the moment. I said the worst word I could possibly think of and it just sort of slipped out. And I'm not going to make any excuses to why it did, because there are no excuses for it. I'm disappointed in myself, because it seems like I've learned nothing from all these past controversies. And it's not that I think I can say or do whatever I want and get away with it. That's not it at all. I'm just an idiot. But that doesn't make what I said or how I said it okay. It was not okay. I'm really sorry if I offended, hurt, or disappointed anyone with all of this. Being in the position I am, I should know better. I know I can't keep messing up like this. And I owe it to my audience and to myself to do better than this because I know I'm better than this. I really want to improve myself and better myself, not just for me, but for anyone that looks up to me or anyone that's influenced by me. And that's how I want to move forward away from this. That's all I had to say. Thank you for watching. All right, ready? Yeah. Foremost, I want to apologize for how long this video has taken. There is no excuse, reason, or thing I could say to make that okay, and I want to take full accountability for that. However, I understand that my actions, even over the past few weeks, have not been hand in hand with accountability. And that's a journey that I am beginning with this video. I also understand with the white privilege that I possess, I have no right to ask or expect forgiveness from anyone that I have hurt with my actions. Over the past few months, I have seen the explosive effects of what running from your problems can do and how many people you can hurt by doing that. But I'm aware that making this video about my emotions would do nothing but be another selfish and careless action and further the problem. I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart for being such a big part of canceled culture for the entirety of my career. I don't deserve a platform if I continue to act in such a gaslighting and irresponsible manner and I'm so sorry for how long I've done that. I could sit here and blame it on the people I watched or the people that raised me or the advice that I chose to take but at the end of the day I chose to take those paths. I chose to only listen to yes people. I chose to idolize people that taught me the complete wrong way to handle the responsibility responsibility of this platform and it breaks my heart that it took me getting to 22 years old to realize that. With that being said, I want to express my utter disgust with every single apology video I've ever made. I'm sorry for uploading them, I'm sorry for defending them, and I'm sorry for putting them out to such a huge audience. I did nothing but look at apology videos as people digging up my past again. If I had spent the time I spent pandering, deflecting, making excuses, and spewing ignorance to millions of people becoming a better person, I would be in a far far better place right now and for that I can only hold myself accountable. It is far past the time I needed to own up to my behavior and take 100% accountability for my actions. And if I had wanted people to see that I'd truly grown, you'd think that my actions would have been in unison with that thought before this moment. I want you to know I'm aware of that and I am so sorry for how much of a coward I have acted like. It's inexcusable. It's completely, completely inexcusable. One thing I've learned over this time is the undeniable responsibility that goes hand in hand with a platform of this size. I am so sorry for ever thinking I could possess all that I have without acknowledging the extreme responsibility that comes with it. I had every single resource to change and I am so sorry for choosing the wrong route every single time. I have so much work to do on myself to become a better person and I intend on showing you that. All right, Chase, what do you got? This video is cut up like a Freddy Krueger movie. It's bad. The sunlight changes positions. The sunlight's there at the beginning and it's there at the end. It's cut, it's reassembled, it's rearranged. But all the words are there. 
all the right words, the perfect words to trigger you to believing her are all there. There's no emotion. There's not an ounce of any emotion in the face in anything that she's doing. There is some emotion uh, when she's using very good baton gestures. And the entire video is just devoid of anything. And these hard baton gestures and head nods moving forward are indicative of watching a video of someone giving a motivational speech or someone telling you, you need to get up out of bed in the morning, make your bed, get to the gym. One of those videos, those little inspirational videos. And I think she unconsciously took cues from some of those videos or from some of those speakers, because that's how she says all of it. It might as well be a, a Tony Robbins commercial at this point. And I think she took some, some cues of people doing that. So do me a favor, if you want, when we do the replay of this, go back and watch it on mute. And tell me if you see someone sad or somebody giving you a pep talk. Because that's what I see. I think the whole thing was prepared. I'll go ahead and give my number now. I'll give a 0 0.624. Uh, Mark, what do you got? Yeah, so that is relentless, isn't it? Absolutely relentless. It, it is exhausting. One thing I would I would love, uh, Scott, if you get a moment, is 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 put in some of the footage of us watching her. Okay, <laughs> deliver that because here's what I noted about us watching. And and fair play, I think it's fair to say she is a you know very good looking entertainer essentially. So, and she's looking right down the barrel all the time. So she should be able to grab our attention. Okay. She should be able to grab our attention. There are times when none of us can look. When all of us are looking away. And the reason is, is that instinctually, we know we can't accept her idea. We know that we can't, if we look at her, it would suggest that we buy her apology and instinctually all of us were just going you don't look don't look don't look don't give her don't give her don't even look at her don't let her see anything because we know she needs to be still outside the group she's not healthy to be in the group so it'd be interesting to see that here's what i think we've got here and and i'm going to coin an idea here uh, you know it was it was i think it was chase or greg or maybe chase and greg that, that, that first kind of introduced me to the, the resume statement, which is when somebody says, well, you know, why would I have done that? Because look at all the good things. She does what I'm going to call an inventory statement, which is she lists all the bad things. Okay, so now it's like, how could I be a bad person? Because look at all the bad things I'm going to list for you. Now, in, if, if any of you out there have ever been part of uh, Alcoholics Anonymous or, or Narcotics Anonymous, you know, people uh, around people or working with or have had an addiction yourself, you'll realize that, that step four is taking the inventory. It's kind of looking at yourself and going, here's all the ways that I've really kind of messed this one up. And, and AA kind of say, you've got to be careful around this because there is a there is a, an inclination towards grandiosity around this, of kind of just enjoying this too much and coming up with just too much of a grandiose list and ultimately falling into your same pattern of addictive behavior by coming up with the most extreme self-pitying example of this, of this thing, which is to look at yourself and go, look, Here's what I think the problems are with, with me, and I'm sincere about this. This is a huge inventory statement. It is just, as Chase said, all the right buzzwords listed, and they keep on coming, and it keeps on getting worse. I have never seen anything like this in my life. It's extraordinary. Uh, I think Chase overestimates this at a, a 0 0.1, whatever it was. I'm going into, I'm giving it a minus three, a minus three on this one. It was appalling. Greg, what have you got? So the, 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 for me, 
we hit some of the same things. What you're calling an inventory, I would call checklisting. I said, she's got like a woke checklist she's running down and saying, here are the things I got to cover to make sure I stay alive. She, I said in my notes, she sounds like she's negotiating a contract with the devil. She has to put every detail in there to make sure that she gets it all covered and everything goes through. One of my favorites is she said, in my past, I've been guilty of, her exact words were, selfishness and, ca and carelessness with all of my apologies, but I'm going to do another one. I love that part. It makes it even better. At the end of everything she says, Mark, I'll steal one of your lines, her tone goes down. It's telling. It's not asking. When I'm asking for you to approve of me and I'm saying, I'm so sorry I did that. I don't say I'm so sorry I did that. I don't drive down at the end of every statement, and she does. She's telling. Her brow is beating. She's, she is externalizing everything. We talk about how people deal with problems. It's all out. There's nothing. There's no internal. And I think, Chase, what you're talking about, you don't see any internalization of any of this stuff. These are just spewing words, like some kind of a pressure hose. And then if I look at her along the way, she's she has this other one. The only time she does anything that looks believable, and I agree with you, Chase, is when she starts that batoning thing. And that's around, I need to take responsibility. It's not around anything internalized or anything personal or shame or guilt it's around i need to take control and her hands are moving then and that's what i got and i will give her a flat flat zero scott what yeah. do you got i'm gonna go against all of you i believe every word of it <laughs> <laughs> you remind your ex-wife is that <laughs> <laughs> she watches this <laughs> i think uh, all right, so here's where I'm going. She, her, she's talking. Her speed is through the roof. And I think here's what's happening. The reason we hear her go down like this, da, 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 because she's got a list of things. And I think what she's doing, because we see, see so many cuts in there, is she's looking at She's going, uh, so I need to do so-and-so and so-and-so. I need to do so-and-so and so-and-so. Then I need to do this, that, and the other thing. Then I need to do this, that, and the other thing. And then I need to, and then I need to do this, that, and this thing. And then I need to, so I see, then she's cutting all those together. That's why it sounds like that. Cause maybe she practices, maybe she does them three at a time and picks the best one. The same thing in the studio. You have somebody sing the, sing their, whatever track they're doing three, four times and you pick the best parts of it. I think that's what she's done. That's why we see as we go, as we go through, you see the sun going down just at somebody. If when you fast forward through this, you'll just see that you see it get darker back there. And then at one point it goes back to light because she's taken that one section from the beginning and put it there toward the end where her hair is back perfect again, because sometimes her hair is thrown back behind her or behind her back. And there's like one little straggly piece and it's all up here at another point. And that point where she starts telling, where she starts using illustrators, her, sh her shoulders forward a little bit. And I think what she, she's telling that is the person she's been talking to, to this about and saying, here's what I've learned. Here's what I've, I've gotten together. And this is where she's really into it because she's, she's selling the part where she really feels bad and she really shouldn't be doing those things. So I think she does feel reg regret about that. We see no emotional changes whatsoever in her face. Not one, not one. And that just, that, this whole thing tells me, I, I hate to keep saying narcissistic personality type, but in this case, I think we're seeing like the uh, top notch, number A, number one narcissist right here. And not the dangerous kind, but the, the kind who's just, you can't tell me everything because they know everything. One of those. And uh, let's see, what else we're looking at here? And, her, and uh, as for illustrators, her head's like doing this number the whole time. She's doing it. That's when these real other illustrators come up and she starts hitting those words uh, specifically. That's the only time I think I agree with you, Greg, that we're actually seeing something that means anything at that point. Her eyes, her, uh, her eyebrows don't move much at all. There's nothing going on up here. Botox. And there's nothing going on in the obiculus, uh, obicularis oculi, these little things down here, the little muscles are down here that pushes up when you start crying. Because at some point she should be going, and you know what? She should squint and be looking, but she doesn't. We see a little bit of movement, but they're almost dead up in there. And I know you don't Botox those if you do. That's crazy. <laughs> um, and it, her, her stare at the camera, she's just dead. She's looking right down the barrel, but she's like looking aggressively right down, down the barrel at the camera. Like, I'm telling you something. It just doesn't stop. It's just like she's, it's, it just, it just goes on and on. And I had to stop the dang thing. And overall, 
I'm going to give her a just. I'm going to give her a zero too. If you can, if you can go, I'm with Mark though. If you can go lower than zero, I'm there with you, man. If you can show me where that is, but but I'm going right down to to nothing. I give her nothing on this. I think that's the biggest bunch of. I think it's uh, the least, the lowest rated for truth we've ever watched on the behavior panel. Oh Possibly. yeah, yeah. Well, having said having said that, I I did there there is some emotion there and 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 you you see her when she says um breaks my heart she goes breaks my heart and she fist pounds there's only one reason people tend to fist pound and that's anger (laughs) so so having said that i'm not gonna buy into this is emotionless i would suggest it's full of anger full of anger and and potentially anger against her community that's externalizing the problem. Yeah, it's externalizing the problem, and that's maladjustment. Yep, yep. Yeah, it makes sense. All right. All right. Well, if you like what we're doing on this channel, go ahead and subscribe, because we're trying to get as many subscribers as we possibly can. There's a little bell once you subscribe. Click that bell, and it lets you know in your feed when we're um, you have something new out. We come out every Thursday. So please subscribe. Get on here, and please hit subscribe. All right. Then uh, there's one more in the can, and I'll see you guys next time. See you. Good.